Uh. It's the new Red Dream Show! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, with my humblest apologies, your host, my uncle, Red Dream! Oh. Thank you. Thank you very much. Nothing to apologize for there, Harold. I got a great show for you today, and this is just a hint of what's coming up in Handyman Corner. Industrial strength diapers. <laughs> no, no, Harold, I call this the winchy. It's idiot proof. Here, prove it. <laughs> See up button there. See? You got one of these babies in your house, you get things down off a high shelf, you know? No problem. Don't need a ladder. Don't need a step stool. Get cheesies off the fridge. Get your hat off the antlers. Get your overserved sister-in-law down off the chandelier. Whatever it takes, you're there. All right, Harold, let me down. Way to go, Harold. You blew a fuse. You pushed the button too hard. No, I didn't. No, it's not a fuse. It's a, the power is out all the way down to the lake. Here, look. <laughs> out a mathematical problem. Of course, Harold is of no use whatsoever. Although he does make a pretty good burn up on a... You'll find out later. And I'm going to show you how to do some soldering as my salute to heavy metal. Yeah, well, you have a nice day, too. <laughs> well, I complained to the power company. Let them know what I thought of the bad service they've been giving us. Well, maybe it has something to do with all the bad checks you've been giving them. <laughs> no, it doesn't, Harold. Power is the COD business, all right? They don't get my C till I get their D. <laughs> See, when they put the power in here, they just didn't anticipate the requirements of a handyman such as myself. I like things that hum when you turn them on. <laughs> yeah, right. I, you know, I heard they're going to put a transformer tower on the far side of Possum Lake. That ought to solve it for you. Oh, yeah. Oh, great. Ah, what? Yeah, that, tra that transformer tower is going to bring in so much electricity, we'll be bouncing checks right into the next millennium. <laughs> yeah, okay, but they're going to stick it right in the middle of Possum Park. You know, that's, that's like right between the bog and the, and the garbage fire. That's where all the adults sit to watch the bull races, so now we've got to watch Possum Lake bull races like, cowering under this metal monstrosity. Got an idea here, Harold. Uh-oh. Why don't we make the transformer tower serve double duty? You know, not only bring 50,000 volts into the area, but we can use it as a vertical grandstand. <laughs> a a, 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 a vert vertical grandstand. People can sit on it, Harold. Right? That's the trouble with your generation. Huh? You got no entrepreneurial spirit. If you look hard enough, Harold, you'll see an opportunity staring you right in the face. Yeah, but why does it always have a hood over its head and a scythe in its hand? <laughs> Well, unbeknownst to me, Bill had heard about our idea for the vertical grandstand, so he got himself some of these model rockets as a way of serving refreshments up to the people sitting way up in the rafters there. Kind of a hobby thing and a space program all combined. So he's got uh, the wires hooked up to the rocket. They start with electricity. Oh, 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 she's falling over. She's on an angle there, Bill. You might... Bill, she's on an angle. Yeah, yeah. What's that? Oh! That's how that works. Now I'm in the van. What's a live rocket? Boy, oh boy, it reminds me of a couple of dates I had in high school. No, no, thank you, Bill, you batted a rocket. Bill's program is kind of like NASA. Well, not quite the same, but it rhymes. What's he doing? Come on, wait. Oh, stand back, stand back, stand back, stand back, stand back, stand back. All clear. Bill will be back a little bit later in the show with a couple more rockets and a lot more trouble. <laughs> well, here we are with Hap Shaughnessy. We're all set to play our Possum Lodge word game. What is our prize today, Hap? Red, the grand prize is a pair of ear flaps from Raymond's House of Rubber. Well, certainly a good prize. Uh, Harold, give me the word there. All right, don't look at this, Hap. I'll tell the people at home what it says. All right, and I got 30 seconds to get you to say this. All right, here we go. Somebody who makes up stories. Author. No, uh, Ernest Hemingway and I. No, 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 no. Uh, someone who tells falsehoods. Politician. Uh, when, I, when I was Charles de Gaulle's no, bodyguard. No, 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 no. A person who bends the truth. Secret agent. No. I was, da I was down in Algeria. No, 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 I, I, have, I know. I got it. I got it. I got it. Hap Shaughnessy, you are a. Uh, um, 
<laughs> Deep sea diver, no, no. astronaut, no, no. sumo wrestler, <laughs> inventor. Okay, inventor, yes, okay, okay, because you invent stories, so that uh, makes you a... Uh... Broadway playwright. What? Oh, that was years ago. I haven't written a hit musical in years. <laughs> All right, Hot, say somebody says that you never were an astronaut or a sumo wrestler, you never were a playwright, that person is a... Oh, the liar. There you go. <laughs> That's it. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, do you know the worst liar I ever met? No. Michelle Pfeiffer. <laughs> she swore that she wouldn't fall for me. Said it was only going to be a sexual relationship. Uh -huh. But, oh, no. <laughs> oh, fruit, 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 fruit. Nature's way of making things scoot. Fun to eat and fun to throw. But if you toss them, here's something to know. I had an experience down by the beach. I nailed a guy with a rotten peach. He was a full-figured man. He could really hit. So if you were predisposed to throwing peaches, I would make sure that you, first of all, remove the pit. <laughs> Well, with my idea to build this uh, vertical grandstand, we're going to have to attach aluminum lawn chairs to the steel transmission tower. So I thought I'd take this uh, handyman corner and show you how to bond metal to metal. I want you just to imagine that this is the transmission tower, and imagine that this is a lawn chair. <laughs> All right, now what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to start that up uh, one of these uh, soldering torches. Yes, we're going to solder this whole thing together. You know, solder's a strange word. You don't pronounce the L. You just say solder. If you say solder the clerks are going to stay away from you in, in droves all right so it's, it's called it's called a silent l whereas you get a word like help you know you want to pronounce the l there hep hep see nobody comes and don't confuse the two all right now what you want to do is you just want to heat up the metal there get them both good and hot i recommend you use a torch but i suppose you can use a stove or if you're real fast you can use an explosion <laughs> all right that's good now you get some of this flux and you want to put that on there, it kind of cleans the thing there, and you can, you can just put it on with your fingers. <laughs> but I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> All right, now uh, just get your solder, and uh, you want to heat that up, put that solder in there, that the metals become one thing, all joined together. And don't be shy, just lay the solder in there. <laughs> ah, hold her. <laughs> hap, hap, I'm covered in solder. Hey, nobody comes. <laughs> now, I'll tell you, solder's not all that strong, but if you sock enough on there, she ought to hold. <laughs> all right, uh, we're going to have to move to something a little stronger than solder, so I'll just get this stuff all off myself, and uh, I'll be right back. Man, I feel like a baked potato. <laughs> all right, this is called brazing, because you do it with brass. You did it with copper, I guess you'd call it crazing. <laughs> did it with nitroglycerin, you'd call an ambulance. <laughs> and all you gotta do is add the oxygen to the flame there on the acetylene and you can get her pretty darn hot, I'll tell you. Now, I don't have real brass, that's expensive, so I'm just gonna use a coat hanger. Should be okay. <laughs> and what you do is you just get this so hot, you don't even need any flux with this, you know. This gets really warm, you just lay the brass and the bronze right in there, or the coat hanger, as I say. And the beauty of this stuff is, uh, you, you know, the hot, it's so hot you can use it for cutting metal pipes or metal plates or metal girders even. <laughs> or that. <laughs> well, we're getting pretty serious now. This is what they call an arc welder, which is sort of like controlled lightning, except this baby strikes twice in the same place. <laughs> Come to think of it, I've seen welders strike in the same place for the last 30 years. <laughs> now, the way this works is uh, you take a clip like this, you clip that right onto your work. That's sort of like your ground wire. And then the other unit, uh, kind of an odd-looking thing, you take that and you stick the rod in the end there. And the way she works is uh, you don't use a flame or anything. It's just this rod touches the work and that closes the circuit and that does your welding for you. The only problem is she's pretty bright and can hurt your eyes. So for safety's sake, and you know me, safety forced, uh, <laughs> for, for safety's sake, we're going to put the mask on. Oh, boy. Hang on a minute there. Wow. There, hang on a little. Ah. All right, now, you, you can't always see when you, know, you do this, but what you do is you just touch the, the rods of the work and the spark will, will let you know what you're doing. <laughs> oh. There we go. 
Solid as a rock. <laughs> All right, now I may have welded some of my tools and various workshop collectibles to the unit, but look at the bright side. I now have a burglar-proof environment. <laughs> and I've also welded my wedding ring to my belt buckle, which is kind of poetic. <laughs> so remember, if women don't find you handsome, they should at least find you handy. Everybody enjoys seeing a guy being chased by a moose. Stay tuned. Garth Hartwell here. Animal control. Get in here, Red. All right, Garth. Wow. What happened? Stand a little too close to the dart team, did you? Oh, I wish. No, I was pecked by seagulls. Wow. I'll tell you, Red, that is it for me in outdoor restaurants. <laughs> all right, do you have a feature for us at all today, Garth? Hmm? A feature? <laughs> oh, 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 yes, 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 yes. All right, today, Red, we're going to be talking about how to get rid of something a little bit larger than we usually talk about. All right. A moose. Oh, sure, with a shotgun, yeah. I'm going to pretend I didn't hear that, Red. <laughs> no. All right, fine. No, what you want to do, say, 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 you got, say you got a moose hanging around your house. Mm -hmm. Well, what you want to do is get yourself a can of moose musk. Moose musk. Moose musk. All right. Now, to a male moose, this is um, uh -huh. uh, very, very pleasant, uh, very... Um, well, it's uh, uh, very, uh, very, very attractive. I know what you're talking about. <laughs> now, you take the moose musk, you take it deep, deep into the woods. Oh, yeah. And you take the top off. Oh, oh, now, oh, boy, look at that, huh? Uh -huh. Now, you see, now, this uh, will attract the moose deep into the woods. Yeah. Of course, uh, boy, that's, uh, that's a heck of a lot of uh, moose musk there. Uh, oh, man, there's yeah. enough hormones there to start a lift bridge, I think. Oh, <laughs> right there. Oh, oh. Well, uh, of course, you don't need to use anywhere near this amount of moose musk. A tiny, tiny little bit will do. Uh, boy, that much uh, moose musk, I think that, that would probably attract... Uh, Looks like about 25 to 30 to me. Yeah, probably, I'd say probably at least 25 to 30. Uh, of course, that much moose musk is going to drive a moose absolutely crazy. Oh. Sensory overload. Low, low, low. Oh, boy. Another super day. <laughs> Run, Harold! Don't you pass me, Harold! 